and welcome to ETF Edge, your go-to place for everything exchange-traded funds. I'm your host, Bob Pisani. Bitcoin ETFs launched last week with big volume. So how are they trading? What's next? Let's ask Catherine Clay. She's the executive vice president and global head of derivatives at SIBO Global Markets. Also joining us, Dave Nautic, financial futurist at Vetify, and Jennifer Grancio, head of global wealth for TCW. She'll join us later in the show. Catherine, uh, we had, what, 10 spot Bitcoin products launched last week. SIBO launched six of those 10. How are these products trading relative to Bitcoin? I just want to make sure they're tracking because that's what the viewers want to know about. Well, Bob, as expected, these ETFs are exactly tracking Bitcoin, and that is the intention, and that is what we're observing. I love to hear the traders screaming in the background. <laughs> it, it, it does, as an old floor guy myself, it does my heart good to know that people are still screaming at each other on the floor. Uh, it sort of yes, seems it like it still the next, happens here on the SIBO floor. <laughs> it seems like the next logical step. Uh, is options uh, on spot Bitcoin ETFs. What can you tell us about the process? How far along is SIBO with that? Well, we agree with you clearly that options uh, are absolutely intended for these ETFs. Uh, we believe that the utility of the options, what they provide to the end investor in terms of downside hedging, uh, really risk-defined exposures into Bitcoin, uh, really would help the end investor in the ecosystem. And so we have filed with the SEC to be able to list options on these spot Bitcoin ETFs and are you awaiting know, uh, the, the regulators. So your, um, I want to bring in Dave here. Your observations matches Catherine's. These are tracking Bitcoins accurately. Is oh, that yeah. right? The, I, I don't think there was much question the funds would do what they said they're going to do on the tin. All they hold is Bitcoin. So they're, of course, tracking very well. The spreads have been tight. The volumes have been fantastic. Something like 10 billion traded so far. That puts them in the top 20, 30 trading ETF buckets out there. So absolutely the liquidity there. When the options come on the online, however, I think that opens up a whole new market here because once that options ecosystem is completely baked, I think you're going to start seeing all sorts of hedge fund players in the space, folks who might not have been traditionally speculating on crypto directly in the crypto ecosystem are now going to have something to play with. Yeah, and how is it going to change? Will, will that affect Bitcoin at all? I mean, what is options going to do? Well, so if if what happens in Bitcoin happens in is what's happened in single stocks, we're going to see retail in particular and a lot of institutions move towards zero data expiration options trading on Bitcoin itself. It's got inherent leverage oh in it. Yeah. Now you're really bringing up a can of worms. Bitcoin with zero data? Yeah, I, th I think it's absolutely what we're going to see. I think it's going to involve a lot more money chasing the top three or four Bitcoin ETFs that have the most volume. I suspect that the the iShares product, iBit, will be the one that gets to the most vibrant options market just because of the liquidity we've already seen. You know, I ha can't help, uh, and, and Catherine, jump in, but I can't help but notice that Bitcoin's two-year peak in price occurred the day the ETFs went public. I mean, we were at like 49,000 intraday. And now we're 42, now we're 42 something yeah. like that. So we call this the inclusion effect. Those of us who study indexes, you know, this happens when companies going into the S&P 500. It happened with the with the gold ETF in 2004, run up, and then it just sort of flattens out a bit. Yeah, it's sell the news, right? I mean, this is it's speculative assets. When they, they trade on narrative like this, you always sell the news. I think it's a mistake to think that this is going to go straight down. However, it's definitely a new set of buyers, and more demand means higher prices. You know, uh, Dave and Bob brought it and Dave, up. I would Go like ahead. to jump in here. Go ahead. Just to, I think we're getting way ahead of ourselves when we start introducing the concept of zero DTEs, these short dated options uh, on these Bitcoin uh, ETFs. Uh, we still have not even received approval to list options. So let's not get ahead of ourselves and think about zero DTEs. We want to get options on these ETFs in a very intelligent and thoughtful way that actually, as Dave is talking about, really builds the ecosystem of new entrants into the market, being able to lay off risk and to really define what type of exposure the end investor or those uh, RIAs that are working with their clients to actually define what's appropriate for a portfolio that an end investor has. So zero DTEs, later conversation. We're still in a holding pattern with the regulators to get these options approved.
No, it's not. We're having the conversation now. See, <laughs> nodding isn't waiting for anybody. I know you no, have to do Catherine, that. I, Catherine, we got where you're at, Catherine. But see, he Catherine, doesn't have to do anything. Catherine's point is correct, right? There are a lot of steps between now and there. But to me, it's it's pretty obvious that's the, the ultimate direction. Yeah. In between, however, we're going to see all sorts of covered call writing strategies, buffered products. Everybody's going to start using options around Bitcoin. All right, he brought it up, okay? So don't get that's, mad at me, Catherine. Zero yeah. data expiration <laughs> options. We're, we're a huge hit. You, you, you were at... You were very involved in all of that last year. I, I think half of options trading is now zero day to expiration ones. I, I know SIBO's already well, moved on the Russell 2000. Um, how, tell us a little bit about all of this. I mean, we're kind of astonished watching this, how big it's, it, it's, it's become. Do, tell us about what, what percentage of retail traders. We can't seem to figure this all out. Do you have any data on this? It's, it's fascinating to us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And let's just back up a little bit and understand that it's it's not zero DTEs available in every optionable underline. These zero DTEs are only available in index option and select ETF options. So they are not even in the single stock universe. And for uh, reasonable reasons, that hasn't made that migration yet. But there has been tremendous growth in our index options. And for sure, it's been led over the past year by these short dated options, these Tuesday, Thursdays, expiries because it actually lets investors fine tune their exposures to events and to different sentiments that they may want to express on a day to day basis. And at the end of the day, since these index options are cash settled, they can then redeploy their capital in new ways. So we do see a lot of growth coming from those zero DTEs, but just want to make it clear, they're not extended to the entire optionable universe yet. And right. so when no, I say we we're ahead we, of ourselves we, in this conversation, that's why. We, well, that's what we're supposed to do. We spin stuff ahead. It's, it's the media. So do we have any data on how many retail players are in this? Because people will come back and say, well, no, the market makers are the primary people using these. But I find that hard to believe. I, do, I, I don't have a lot of really good, solid data on who is using these. It seems like it's got to be some mix of market makers who are hedging themselves and other people and, and retail investors. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's anybody who's looking for that kind of exposure, which includes some retail and plenty of institutions. If you tease out contract sizes and the average trade size, you can make some guesses about what's retail and what's not. Last time I ran those numbers, it was less than half. I think the media retail, tends to get really, retail. yeah, I think people get excited and think that this is every mom and pop investor. On any given day, I've been able to account for 20 to 40 percent, depending on it. Um, the rest of it's institutions, it's market makers, it's hedge funds.